Welcome to the Aptive Edge, a TTI podcast discussing the role of Aptive's broad suite of products in electronic systems from the highway or the factory floor to low earth orbit and everywhere in between. And now, let's hear from the experts from Aptive and our TTI specialists. Thank you, Jim. And hello, everyone. Thanks again for tuning into this episode. My name is Gabe Osorio, Director of Transportation Marketing for the Americas for TTI's Transportation Business Unit. And with us today again is Nitesh Bohadar, Senior Application Engineer from Aptiv. Welcome to this episode, Nitesh. Hey, Gabe. Great to be back in the studio. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, In this episode, we're going to uh, get down into some uh, detail here about portfolio solutions for 48 volt uh, from Aptiv, uh, specifically applications on vehicle and in other industries. So Nitesh, first question, where are 48 volt systems most commonly used on vehicles today? So in the broad sense, if you group your electrical systems into ones with high power needs and lower power needs. Um, 48 volt systems are typically used in those applications with high power demands. Sure. So can you give me some examples of what that might look like? Because I assume it's probably not just, you know, your infotainment screen or something like that, right? Yeah, actually, um, on the contrary, you know, when we think about just systems we use every day in our cars, um, HVAC blowers, seat motors to adjust uh, your seat position, um, steering suspension, uh, break by wire, uh, and even something uh, like uh, window defrosters and window heaters, right? Those are um, the common applications. But another one that you might be really familiar with these days is mild hybrids. Um, So those are all systems that are kind of designed with higher gauge wire um, and more power. So going to 48 volts, they benefit from that reduced cable and size and weight. on the other hand, the lower power systems like infotainment and lighting actually will often remain at 12 volts. Natasha, so you mentioned wire size. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah. So an easy way to think about it is that 48 volts helps reduce wire size. So it's most beneficial whenever you see those larger wires. Um, the larger the wire is, the more benefit there is to moving to a higher voltage. So just an additional question there. In a hybrid system, would... 48 volt connectors take the place of or replace maybe some lower high power interconnects say something like a hva 280 hv 280 you know something with you know 60 70 amps of uh of volts that kind of thing yeah absolutely so something that's capable of 48 volts can lower that current and can easily reduce the size of those blades and terminals yeah which is important because obviously those are using larger orange cable uh, which potentially again brings that weight reduction uh, cable size reduction routing ease all of those additional kind of features that would come along with moving to a 48 volt solution yep and you've kind of made the system safer yeah that makes sense so along with that what are some additional advantages of using 48 volts in these systems so 48 volts enables the use of those smaller wires and connectors, right? And that really, at the base of it, reduces copper usage and lowers weight and then improves packaging efficiency. So these improvements contribute to really what we care about today, which is, you know, fuel economy, EV range, um, and, you know, having a little more space in the cabin. Yeah, absolutely. And you've mentioned packaging efficiency uh, a couple of times now. Well, can you tell me a little bit more about what you mean and what role does that actually play? Yeah, so today, you know, if you look around your car, our consumer vehicles are just packed with features. Um, you know, modern car today, there are switches, motors, and regulators everywhere. When you have a harness and a connector system that's easier to route, assemble, and package, you end up using less space, often resulting in more cabin space for the consumer. And that's the role of having better packaging efficiency um, in today's modern architectures. Yep, exactly. Yeah. No, that makes sense. So is that only relevant, you know, we in, and before I ask a question, I know we spent a lot of time obviously focusing on the automotive side of things. And I think we address that in that as automotive, because of volume of scale, right, uh, helps to proliferate these types of designs. So does that mean that this type of design or type of benefit is only relevant to passenger vehicles or or does it expand beyond that? Actually, today we're seeing some of these features move into a lot of adjacent markets like ag and construction equipment. So packaging efficiency is definitely starting to play a role outside traditional automotive. That makes a lot of sense. And I would imagine as you move into those markets, 
you know, I think of construction, especially so many different uh, devices, uh, needs that those vehicles have that are different from an automotive perspective, right? You're not worried about necessarily your radio or all of those things, although they do have them. It's much more controlling an arm or moving tires or wheels or powering any kind of auxiliary device, that kind of thing, I would imagine. <laughs> yep. And manufacturing plays a big role in that. Everybody wants a system that's easier to assemble. Yep. And, you know, having that lower, smaller wires definitely plays a role in that. Certainly, certainly, certainly increases the design flexibility, I would imagine. So does that mean that there could be any kind of limitations to using 48 volt uh, in vehicle designs? Yeah, at the lower end of the power spectrum. Um, lower power systems like infotainment or lighting may not always benefit from 48 volts and often remain at that 12 volt architecture. Uh, for those smaller loads or for signal cables, um, the conductor size is mainly driven by needing a robust enough wire to withstand vibration and mechanical loads, rather than being sized by the current itself. Since there's less benefit to changing these low power loads, uh, multi-voltage architectures will continue and probably always remain. Sure. So not something that's going to be going away anytime soon, obviously. I wouldn't expect it. Yeah. So thinking outside again of automotive applications, some, you, you know, you mentioned construction. Are there additional industries that are working to adopt this 48 volt solution? We're seeing a lot of growth of 48 volt architecture in different markets. Um, robotics, industrial equipment, marine, commercial vehicles. Uh, they're all seeing benefits from reduced copper usage, packaging flexibility, and cost savings. So, Ditesh, you mentioned uh, robotics, industrial equipment, and some other you know market segment applications. Can you talk a little bit more about that and, and maybe expand on that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, consider automation and robotics, where you might have a gripper at the end of an articulating arm. Having smaller wire sizes and more flexible harness can help with tight packaging uh, while also increasing lifting capacity of that arm. Um, and in marine and transport, 48 volts reduces weight and cost, resulting in more cost-effective transport and capacity. The basic concept of using higher voltage to reduce wire sizes applies across all these industries. Uh, here at Aptiv, we're actually very passionate about bringing our solutions to as many of these industries as possible. Are these industries that you're talking about, you know, robotics, commercial vehicles, et cetera, are they already at these higher voltages or are they migrating towards that? There's a couple. Um, in commercial vehicles, there's already been an adoption of 24 volt systems for many of the same reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, 48 volts is for them really the next logical step while commonizing with the other industries. Mm -hmm. Similarly, forklifts have been using higher voltages for quite some time because of how high they have power loads. Um, and some industries like the ever popular battery operated power tools have been at 48 volts for a while already. So you're saying my drill or my blower that I have in the garage is at 48 volts as well too? Oh yeah, many of them. So why then is 48 volts becoming a standard across these sectors? I'm assuming it's a combination of a lot of these benefits we've been talking about. Oh yeah, while commonizing all these industries, you know, the power demands continue to grow. Uh, so 48 volts hits that sweet spot. Um, it's powerful enough to support demanding systems but still considered low voltage, which simplifies safety and compliance. So let's talk specific to Aptiv's portfolio of solutions. What solutions is Aptiv offering today for uh, 48 volt architectures? So Aptiv actually provides a range of connectors for 48 volt architectures already. And that includes our CTS 1.2, Apex 2.8, PowerPack LV, and DCS 9.5 um, systems. We also have some sealed and ring terminals uh, for those 48 volt systems. All of these support both signal level and high power applications and are standard terminals in the industry. They're automation ready, sealed for environmental protection and color coded for voltage identification. Uh, by early 2026, we'll even be adding a new set of connectors to our catalog that are designed according to the LVCS standard uh, released by a major North American EV OEM. And that'll bring even more options to our customers and in an industry standard format. Yeah, and I think a couple of things to point out there certainly are, one, the common terminals that are used across these, right? These are not necessarily newly designed, new to the market terminals. They're longstanding, well-used, uh, well-proven terminal systems uh, that have, again, those economies of scale and truly the test of time uh, from a performance standpoint, correct? Yeah, correct. Imagine getting those 48-volt benefits without even having to change much of your tooling. 
on the LVCS side, uh, the new standard being released, is it safe to assume that the terminals used in that system for MapDiv are also existing terminal systems and not necessarily a new designed terminal specifically for LVCS? Yep, same deal as the rest. So that brings a lot, again, uh, opportunity from an economies of scale and uh, you know long-term use of performance uh, that, that make it available for design, which is great. Absolutely. So what makes a 48 volt connector, a 48 volt connector. Like why are these connectors then suitable for 48 volts? Yeah, so it's mainly, I would say three things. Um, First, that they meet creepage and clearance standards. Um, Second is that they feature robust terminal systems. And third is that they have um, the appropriate safety features like uh, CPAs or connector position assurance and secondary locks, uh, which, you know, confirm complete mating and prevent terminal push and pullouts. So again, that reliability factor that uh, that the industry is looking for, certainly. Um, can these connectors then, you know, bleed into or make their way into other industries as well too, you know, outside of these transportation type markets that we're talking about? Absolutely. Uh, these connector families are being adopted today in energy storage, robotics, and commercial transport. Aptiv is also preparing for the low voltage connection standard, like we mentioned. So um, hopefully soon, you know, we'll unify those 48 volt connector interfaces across multiple of these industries. Yeah, which is which is significant, I think, because obviously the growing again, the the, the growing demand, the broader application uh, only helps to further proliferation, uh, economies of scale, et cetera, for these interconnects, terminals, et cetera, uh, across the board. So specific to safety and the use of these, uh, you know, of this architecture. How does Aptiv ensure safety in 48 volt applications? Yeah, so, you know, we always start with creepage and clearance requirements uh, where we follow IEC 60664-1. But we also design for electromechanical corrosion, resistance, and ensure proper isolation between voltage levels. So even though 48 volts is low voltage, arcing risks are real. and must be managed in the design. And just to clarify, the IEC 60664-1, that's a that's a creepage spec, correct? That allows for a defined amount of creepage or something along those lines, correct? Correct. Creepage and clearance uh, based on, you know, a host of different voltages. We, we talked a little bit about the LVCS standard, obviously, in this episode and in previous episodes. Why is this so significant or what is the significance behind this LVCS standard? So recently, one of the North American OEMs released LVCS, um, and LVCS, which stands for Low Voltage Connection Standard, uh, defines some standard connector interfaces for 48 volt systems, and that promotes interoperability and safety across multiple industries. By working to a standard, it's easier for multiple devices uh, and device makers to use the same family of connectors, uh, and that promotes economies of scale and makes connectors more cost effective for a wide range of users. So easier to design in, more broadly available, et cetera, right? Across any any market and or industry OEM that's looking to design in a 48 volt architecture. Yep, exactly. Yeah, very, very smart. So how is Aptiv then preparing for future standards like LVCS that might be coming down the line? Yeah, Aptiv is actively tooling connectors to meet LVCS interfaces and specifications already. And when or approximately what is the timeline for availability of some of those interconnect uh, interfaces from LVCS? We're expecting product availability in early 2026, and these solutions will support a wide range of applications beyond automotive while maintaining that high standard of performance and robustness that you assume from Aptiv connectors. And then is LVCS the only standard that Aptiv is currently participating in, or is there more in addition to that as well? Aptiv is actually very active in standard organizations and committees. Um, so along with some that we talked about today, like LVCS, we also participate in US CAR and ISO, uh, where we're discussing future standards with others in the industry. Working with a broad range of standards helps us stay ahead of new trends and make sure we're prepared for new standards that are going to be released. Uh, And that way we can put customers first when rubber meets road. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And there's certainly a lot of product availability from Aptiv to be able to, you know, as we've discussed, to be able to use for these types of design architectures. So to to kind of put a bow on it, it sounds like really 48 volt is uh, something that's coming down the line that will allow for efficiency in electrical, uh, electrical architecture. It'll help reduce weight. 
It'll help distribute more higher power to more higher power applications. Uh, so it really seems like, uh, you know, from, from an easy standpoint uh, or an easy opinion of mine, that this is a no brainer uh, from an electrical architecture side of things. What would you say, Natasha? Oh, yeah. Uh, totally on board. And Aptiv is ready for it. Well, that uh, that wraps up our time with Natesh on 48-volt architecture. Natesh, truly appreciate you being here and uh, participating in this discussion, educating us a little bit more about 48-volt, and uh, discussing some of what Aptiv is doing to help support and drive the future of 48-volt architecture within vehicles. Oh, yeah. appreciate you having me here. It's been a blast. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today on the Aptive Edge, a TDI podcast where we discuss everything from Aptive's broad suite of products. For more information, visit TTI.com.